Hey, this is Laura. This is just a quick uh, check-in from my studio. I'm still working on the um, five big pieces that I started that are on paper. Uh, I finished one. Uh, I think I'm going to finish this one today. And I just wanted to talk a little bit with you about my process because I thought you might find it interesting. These paintings um, came from me working in what I call a spontaneous process. So I had no preconceived ideas of what I was going to paint, um, no overall concepts or feelings that I was trying to express. I just tried my best to be open to uh, making marks and seeing what emerged. So I ended up with two sort of dark paintings that are about some difficult things I've been through, I think. I mean, it really doesn't matter because um, I try my best not to tell people what my paintings are about because I would hope that um, we all have, you know, different types of human experiences and I would like um, people to relate to a painting based on their own experience and perhaps it will provoke something in them that they can relate to. So I don't try to tell my own personal stories too much about my art, but um, I have two pieces that are kind of dark, which I don't mind. I, I, uh, I don't think it's real marketable. I don't think, uh, excuse me, I don't think uh, people um, usually love to um, buy darker paintings that are expressing difficult things. I don't think it's as marketable. They might not like to hang paintings like that in their house, but I certainly enjoy working on my own personal process and expressing difficult things and doing paintings of things that aren't always um, joyful. Although I like to do joyful paintings too. So anyway, two of the paintings um, are maybe a little darker. And then um, I have a painting I started of a mother and a child, which is pretty happy. And I have another one that's of a landscape that's pretty happy, I guess. And then I have two blank pieces of paper. So I'm gonna keep working and I'm gonna keep sharing my process uh, in some of these videos and um, showing their progress. But the one thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is I wanted to show you how my paintings have evolved and changed since I made the first marks on the paper. So I haven't been um, that great at taking a lot of photographs of the paintings as they've progressed from one stage to the next, but I do have some. So I'm gonna show those and um, you can see how I started with simple marks and then other things emerged. The other thing I wanted to talk about is in the process when I'm painting, Oftentimes, I will start by using, let me grab this paintbrush here, by just using my whole arm and um, doing big strokes, you know, that are very physical and um, really expressive. And then I'll go back in with a smaller brush and start working on detail and defining things. And I kind of do this back and forth through, um, being spontaneous and then being controlled and then being spontaneous and then being controlled. And sometimes uh, during the process, I'll get really caught up in being way too controlled at the wrong time or I'll waste a bunch of time on an area that I really shouldn't be spending a bunch of time working on. So um, if I can catch myself before I lose several hours, um, I'll grab a big brush and I'll destroy what's hanging me up and Sometimes I destroy good stuff that I regret, but it's kind of worth it because even if I destroy good stuff that I regret, usually something better emerges out of it anyway. And so one of the things I'm trying to explain is like when you start a painting, especially when you're making up your own composition from scratch and it's all your art and it's nobody else's, um, and you're not just copying something or painting something that's photorealistic, you'll find that there's many layers, you know, and, and that makes a painting look richer too. So if you look at this painting here, you'll see that I have some old marks here that are showing through it. And I went around the, what was there with some new strokes and stuff 
but you can see that there's sort of a layer beneath there. And you can see that in some of this too, that some of this is like a three layers in, and then there's more layers on top of it. So, and I'm going to carry on with that, but it kind of gives a painting a lot of depth and history and makes paintings look more interesting when you work out a composition or you start with something and then you cover some of it up or all of it up or just portions of it up and leave some of the history showing through. So that looks really great too. Um, as far as this painting goes, I've done a bunch of different sessions with this painting where I was spontaneous and using big brushes and even if you look splattering all kinds of paint and it's dripping and stuff. And then I went back in with detail brushes and defined things and shaded some stuff. And then I went back in with a big brush and destroyed stuff. So I've done a lot of this back and forth here. I'll probably do a little more and then I'm going to finish this painting up. So that's essentially my process in a nutshell when I'm working spontaneously. It's super fun uh, because it's sort of like this um, process of chance taking and it's risky because you're destroying things that you may regret destroying in order to create something new. And um, so it's kind of like, um, it's, it's a little bit stressful, you know, but uh, it's also really rewarding, especially when everything comes together. Then it's really rewarding because you've taken a bunch of chances and usually you'll surprise yourself by creating something that's new and different and not the same old thing that you always do. So that's the fun of the spontaneous painting process. And I have one painting that's finished and this one, and then I have four others that I'll be working on. So I'll share more of this process with you as I carry on. Okay.